fam. Thank you for your hands up. Yeah. Oh my god, we have people sitting here in the band. Serena Ryder, hi. Yeah. Wow. That's so awesome. You're up and you're not even a guest today. That's awesome. Oh my god, good morning everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming to our last coffee with Linda. Um, gosh, I know. It's And apparently we're being... Um, filmed and uh, everyone can lay in bed and watch us this morning. Did you know this? Yeah. Yes. So we're being filmed. So if anybody wants to say anything to their loved ones who are too lazy to get out of bed. Um, wow, they, I can't believe how fast the whole cruise is gone. And, uh, what do we think? Amazing? Yeah. And we're done with the drums. I love you. Okay. I'll let you know. <laughs> Not only, has, has, I hope people have gotten to know Cricket and Josie over there at DC, our beautiful partners in Methridge Farms, and um, they have been, any questions you have about CBD or any plant medicine, they're here to help, and um, they're going to help us change the world, which is very exciting. Um, I don't know if you know this, the other day, um, uh, you know, we had NASA Day. Was anyone here for NASA Day? Okay, remember we got to send a message to an astronaut? Yeah. Well, she wrote back. Oh! Yeah, this is so amazing. She, that's right, I have a text from an astronaut on my phone. That's right. Um, how great is that? Here it is. So, I'm going to get emotional because it's so beautiful because this whole cruise has been um, pretty loving and pretty awesome, right? I mean, I, I, I am not sure how to go back and be in the real world after this. Um, but here's what our astronaut said after we sent her a note. We sent her that film, remember, of saying hi? Okay. She said, the saying goes that it is better to be down there wishing you were up here than up here wishing you were down there. That applies to flying machines. More, I'm sure Charlie has heard that. Remember Charlie? He's married to Dana, right? But maybe from a bit of space, but maybe in a, ba a bit of space, wait, hello, but maybe a bit in space also. From up here, there's an element of the overview effect, the profoundly professional impact of seeing the world from the, in the outside. We get an amazing look back at Earth from up here, but I also don't think you need to come all the way up here to get this effect. From your ship, you look out over the ocean and see a silver of land crop up or you look up and see more stars in the sky than you've ever seen before. I hope you take some time in these moments to reflect on yourself, on those who you love, your lo on your life and what brings you joy. That is what I often, I often think about here up in space. I recently made a list of 40 things that makes me happy. Hmm. Everything from good coffee in the morning to snuggling with my son to having the privilege of crossing paths with amazing people like Dana and Royce. But I also realize that I spend entirely too much too I spend entirely too little of my time on Earth doing those things. So when I get back to Earth, okay, what a great sentence by the way. <laughs> what? So when I get back to Earth. <laughs> Wow. I'm trying to get, I mean, let's be honest, I've gotten notes like that from friends who are like, uh -huh. I know. I know you're not with us, dear, but uh, okay. But she literally is not on Earth. Okay. So when I get back to Earth, I plan to get better at, at that because we are all better people when we have joy in our lives. I would be right there with you if I could be. Have a few glasses of wine for me, and I hope to enjoy your company in person on the next year's cruise. Oh my god, freaking astronaut. That's awesome. Wow, okay, so I know people are having feelings of everything that happened the last couple of days. Any fun yumminess you want to share that has blown you away or made you so? Hello, darling. Well, it's been sitting around these crews, I think, that we're celebrating our 10th birthday anniversary. 10! It was on the 1st of April. And, uh, Tell everyone where, where you guys are from. Uh, we're from the Netherlands. Oh. The Netherlands. <clears throat> so, um, last, last, last night, it was not, not last night, uh, last, the last performance of Melissa, it was a very emotional set for us. And one of the things was, because I sang Sleep on our wedding, and we didn't think she would sing the song. And um, she did. We were, we were, she sang Sleep Tonight. And I think 
We were, at that moment, the only ones who were on that cruise because we were just oh, dancing. Know. We were just in our own world. So that, for me, was like a really, really, really special day. What's fun is is when she's up on stage, I get to catch you guys because I, I you're all looking at her, and so I can see these amazing brush strokes of humanity that just bring me to my knees. Because you guys, I'll see I'll see a song start, and two, you guys will look at each other and go, "Oh my God!" I know. <laughs> I'm the only one. Because someone will start singing it, it's somebody. <laughs> it's, it is amazing all the drama that goes on because there's years of relationships. Because I know possibly some people who are here used to be with each other and now aren't. And it's the, it's the lesbian goes to go. So the songs bring out a lot of joy and sometimes very rage. So, um, <laughs> oh man. So the other fun thing we've been doing in the beginning is, is this is the opportunity once a year you guys get me. And so if you have any questions about Melissa that you'd like to ask, or, or life or the cruise or anything, but um, I, I'll attempt to, to answer them. Does anybody? Yes, darling? Yes, darling. Coffee with Linda, I'm so happy. Oh, she talks a lot about angels in her songs. Yes. Angels. Angels. Oh, there's many references or many musicians. Yes, and I don't know if you were at the the um, listening party, the new album. There's a um, on feeling all my angels. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which is is such a great. Um, I love that saying because I'm feeling all my angels is a great way to kind of. Uh, not how Melissa holds the world, not just that, but that it's sort of a way for us to express um, why we believe in plant medicine so much. And uh, is that, uh, especially as women, we are, are stressed out and we are overcome, we eat bad food and take a lot of bad pharmaceuticals and we're not feeling our angels sometimes. This is a big reason I did Nurse Jackie was, I was 10 years ago before, what did you do? You know, long before anybody was knew what the word opioid was, uh, my mom, sweet mom, that's an opioid. <laughs> long story, mom. No, it's an opioid. But, but explain what that was ten years ago, because all my, all of a sudden, my friends, there was an edge happening, and there was stuff happening to them chemically that didn't make sense. So, feeling all your angels is is Melissa's tip to what kind of what we're doing. Um, that this medicine is not just as, as far as wellness, it's going to help your mind, body, spirit, all of that. So that's the angel reference, and she loves it. I mean, there's so many songs she uses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think it's powerful. I think, I think there's only a few people who can use that reference as much as she can, because she is an angel, I'm sorry, but she Aww. kind of is. Yeah. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry, but she is. She is an alien angel from another life. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes she will be so ahead of it, you know, because she's, she's really ahead about thought and everything. So there's times when I have to go, honey, I love you. You're an alien, remember, and you're 10 years ahead of me. She goes, right, right, I gotta slow down. Okay, well, this. I go, okay, it's a mere mortal. Yeah, so she loves the angel reference, but that one, the new one, is, is really one of my favorites. Yeah. Anybody else have? Yes? Have I listened to every song that Melissa's ever written? Yes. <laughs> I love you. Can I just say the crew here has been so much fun. Favorite? Oh, <laughs> All right. You know, 
Top three. Top I don't know if you guys know this, but um, when we got married, um, she sang her vows to me Ooh. Oh. Oh. in a song. And I didn't know anything about the song. I didn't know. And I almost broke up with her because I was so blown away and kind of like, now how, and then she went, okay, your turn, like my turn. <laughs> <laughs> And it was the first time, I mean, for her to sing in front of me, it, it's very powerful. So now I know how you guys feel, you know, because I'm never, I'm usually off to the side. So when she turned to me for the vows, I'm like, oh God, and she's singing right at me. That's was, was pretty powerful. I'm a very lucky woman. Very lucky. So, Woo! yeah. Yes, darling. Oh, favorite song? Well, that's well, one of my favorites because that's like the, the vows song. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of great. Yeah, but I guess that would be my favorite. Personal song. Yeah. Oh, right back there. Oh, oh, it's all. It's just you know what I really use my. All I use this for is for a clock. I swear to God, this is my watch. I've been so relaxed. I've had it turned off. It's like oh. This is a great thing when it's turned off. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to talk about that too. Yes, darling. Okay. The other night you said something, talking about her being 10 years ahead of you. The other night you mentioned that in this newlywed game, which was so much fun. That was fun, right? Who was yeah. at the newlywed yeah. game? <laughs> you mentioned that you had been friends since 2001. Yes. And I thought, Geez, she wrote a song about waking up in 2001. Have you ever thought about it? Oh! Uh, oh. Wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't think about that. Oh, I like that. So that's a good, that's something to come. <laughs> Hi. Is that Jay? Yes. Hi, honey. Hi. So, you know, I'm a huge fan of and I was wondering if you can tell us anything about what sounds to be the best show ever, the new project, The Medicine Show. The Medicine, okay, so that's sort of my new project that we're working on is a um, documentary film version fun of what The Medicine Show is, and that is what we're doing with Josie and Cricket, creating this new uh, business that is also an advocacy for Melissa, for cancer patients, for people who are still incarcerated, for, for cannabis. Uh, so I had all these opportunities after Nurse Jackie to do more shows. And again, when you do TV, what happens is talent kind of calls you in or you might be want to meet talent. I was lucky on Nurse Jackie. Edie Falco was kind of put in my lap and I went, oh my God, it's Edie, I'm going to, oh my God, it's been, that's given, that's, you're just given the greatest race car in the world, right? right. So. Uh, otherwise, you meet with talent and go, okay, what are we going to do? What is it? And it, it's, it's a big to-do. And so I said to myself, after all these years of doing television, if I'm going to spend that much time, I want it to be with my loved ones. Because honestly, there's nothing more interesting out there than what my own life is right now, what Melissa's doing and what we're all doing. So that's what I'm excited about. And it's going to be sort of a hybrid. It's not just going to be documenting what we're doing. It's going to be... Um, hopefully filming part of what the medicine show is and have more fun kind of what this cruise has been a little bit like Melissa and I up on stage on a couch while she's talking to you about stuff it's it's you guys are going to be a part of it it's so to answer your question Jay it's still coming together and it's going to be freaking awesome that's all it's kind of like what the show is it's like you know TV can be over scripted sometimes so it's fun when let's let it breathe and see what happens it's like what gets a, what happens on stage uh, during what you guys have been seeing, it's really wonderful what happens in the moment. I mean, Serena, you doing Carol Burnett uh, the other day was just just made my life. That was hilarious, and for people to get to know you. And uh, rumor has it, oh, I'm going to ask you this: somebody came up to you about a variety show after yeah. seeing that? Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the the heads of Bell Media, VP of Bell Media in Canada, which is like gigantic, and she's amazing. She came up and she wants me to do a variety show. Because of our show together. Yeah. Um, I'm really, really excited and I want you to help me write it. Okay, great. <laughs> we won't even have to write it. 
we will we will frame it for you because Serena should have her own show. Everybody on this crew should have their own show. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, uh, we, 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 my evil plan works. So first one's work is up and running. Good. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more question and then well, your hand went up. Okay, right here. Um, wait, wait, where well, are we? I got a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, okay. Uh, Bob. I'm sitting next to Bob. Hi, Bob. Okay, there you are. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for doing this. Uh, oh, my pleasure. My question is, when Melissa was in high school, did her music teachers think she had talent, or they tell her to go be a secretary or something like that? Do you know? Well, she actually has some good energy around her. First of all, her father, who was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, she does tell the story about the, the choir teacher who kept putting her in the back of the room because her voice was so... <laughs> and he, want, and he, he wanted her to be soprano. She's like, oh, I'm soprano. <laughs> um, but she was... She was uh, she actually had a lot of encouragement around her. It wasn't, it, what, what was tricky was later when she went to Berkeley School of Music for an entire six weeks. Which, was, <laughs> which by the way, she got her honorary doctorate from there and I've never been more jealous. <laughs> because I didn't finish college. I was like, oh, you got your, look at it, it's on the wall. It's like, oh, now I'm jealous. You can, because she only went for six weeks. I at least went for four years. <laughs> Wait, that's something I shouldn't be proud of. <laughs> yeah, she, you know, anyway. No, I was finished. I, I just didn't graduate. <laughs> but, uh, that's a great question. She, she did have some angels around her that did encourage her, but I think um, the biggest thing was being told, hey, girls don't play guitar. You know? Yeah, and uh, boy, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, it's not the greatest American guitar player right now. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, goodbye everybody, thank you. <laughs> Bigger. <laughs> okay, good, good. good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bring out the first guest. Um, hey, Melissa, are you nearby? Oh. Okay, Melissa, come on up. I, I wanna start with you because everybody, we love Melissa Crispo. She's been here since we got first year today. We're gonna do. I, t I told Melissa, I'm just gonna throw you into a little fire. We're gonna have some fun today. With this. <laughs> um, we're gonna talk. Should we? You probably need a stand, right? Yes. Okay. I'm so. These guys. What am I gonna do with these men around me? Who are like, oh, I need a stand. Oh, it's there. <laughs> Boy, I have a sandwich. Be nice. <laughs> 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 And so then people were like, look, that's the bar you were playing in. You should go play. Go play something. And I was like, no. And my wife was like, babe, get on the piano and go play. So I did. And then your crowd that was waiting in line was just going crazy and giving me so much love. It was amazing. And then a second later, somebody was like, Lynn wants to meet you. She's right here. And that's when we came up and met you. That's right. 
It's kind of the short story. And, and again, I told you guys, it's so much fun being married to Santa Claus because we just go through life. And I'm like, oh, that person looks cool. Can I say hi? And they usually say yes. So, and we just fell in love with Melissa right away. And um, I, so much has happened. We're going to talk about the baby in a minute. But you want to play a little song for us to start us off today? I guess I could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I, did I get you? Not at all. Yeah, yeah, I, I just throw you Okay, so. You kind of be an Italian. I was trying to think. <laughs> 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 I was trying to think, okay, it's nice and early. What can I play? But if we're going to talk about my daughter, then um, I'm going to play. Has also. anyone, have you guys seen Lennon? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Adorable. Is she here? She is. Where are the ladies? Where are they? Oh, oh there you are. Hi, Mama. Oh. So yes, having having kids kind of changed your life a little bit. Yeah. So I was always the type of person that was never gonna have kids. Yeah. I. Kids don't like me. That's true. They intimidate me. Um. I was never, I, I think I lacked maternal instinct. I always thought that I did. Yeah. And so, um, did you hear that voice? Yeah. That's yeah. 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 25 years. <laughs> Maybe even longer. Maybe even longer. Sure. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so um, my wife is on maternity leave at the time. So she's home, she's breastfeeding. The baby's 100% attached to her. And so it was time for her to go back to work. So I was going to be alone for the first time with the baby. Now inside, I was, I was panicking. You were terrified. Absolutely. <laughs> but I was like, not going to let Candace know because I'm like, I can do this. <laughs> so she leaves. Baby starts crying. She's in her little rocking thing on the table. She won't stop crying. So I'm like, she likes music. I'm trying any, anything. I'm, I'm trying to find the, one of the 10 remote controls to turn the TV on for baby Joy Joy. There's 30 controls now. It's just beyond. Yeah, and if you have menopause, not fun. <laughs> <laughs> on the side of it, this, on the side of it, she'll be going through puberty when I'm going through puberty. So. Oh, man. Now, <laughs> we'll make sure you have a lot of Etheridge Farms products. <laughs> She leaves and um, baby's just freaking out, crying, crying. There's no change. There can only be a few things that I'm missing here. Like, what is it? At this point, I'm crying now, but I'm not going to call Candace. So I grab my guitar and I like sat over her and I started playing. And I started making up words to a song. Oh well, God. later on, Candace is like, You have to put that song on your album. And I'm like, No. She's like, You have to finish it. That was totally inspired by Call Me Your Daughter. Yeah. But it was supposed to be funny. So there's an album version that's on the album. And then there's the actual version, the first verse that I sang to her that day. So Did we get to hear that? I think I'm going to play yes. that. Yeah. Soon you'll learn to walk, 
Say words when you're learning to talk So I prefer you don't repeat <laughs> Won't you hear from me? Oh, 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 oh,
the twins, and it made them, they would look at me like I was the smartest person in the world. They talked about it. So um, I love that you wrote that. I love that you sang that for us. I love, before you go though, uh, what's your favorite part about being a mom right now? I know your life has changed a lot, and we just love so much that you brought your family with us. And you will come back, of course, on the cruise, the next one. Yes. Okay. And um, so yes. Being a mama, tell me, because today's going to be sort of a mom thing. I think because I, I waited till I was like 38 years old to have a child, I think I think for the first time in my life, there's there's something way more important than me, and it's kind of opened my eyes that it's 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 not about me anymore. There's a love that's much bigger, and that's I don't know, I'm worried about everything now. Like, like things I didn't think about at all yeah. before. Yeah. Now it's like all of my fears, right? Because I'm protecting this child that's mine. And Do you I know what might help? Anything. Because um, apparently my I, I, my wife was a gay rock star, but she has four kids. <laughs> but they're my four bonus kids, and through these kids, have they've changed my life. And one thing that has helped me is when I worry so much about stuff all around them. I know now that. That's part of their path because they're going to help change the world, and so they're going to be fine. Kids are going to be badass, badass. Yeah. And when are you performing next? When can people see you tonight at the HBM Seven Seven? Yeah. Yeah. The younger artists, like especially during the 80s show and during the, the jam, um, you, you went up there, you kind of helped people get in the rhythm. Your momness is coming Your out. Mom <laughs> uh, so I do have maternal instinct. Yeah. <laughs> it's just with all of you on the show. sometimes on the road with Melissa and we have a really wonderful treat and you guys know Max who's Melissa's keyboardist who is the genius wait Max are you here Max Max I don't know if you guys know but um, not only I mean Melissa just she loves this man so much and what he did the other night for 80s night these guys have been working on this all through the European tour Max, you, you were amazing. Well done. Seriously. Thank you. And Max has the most beautiful girlfriend named Sarah, who wrote this book. We're good? Okay. Who wrote this most beautiful book, and I am so happy. We were talking about it during and, and when we were on on the road, and I said, "Would you come on our on my talk show when we're on the on the boat?" She said, "Yes." So I finally, I, this is my first author. I'm so excited! <laughs> oh, you guys, we're going to talk about her book. This is Sarah McCall. Everybody. Thank you, Cricket. <laughs> um, hi. Hi. I'm the, I'm honored to be your first author. I love that you're my first author. Yeah, thanks. Um, um, and before we talk about the book, let's talk about how fun it is to be on the tour bus. Being on the tour bus is very fun. Uh, there are a lot of chips. 
There's a lot of chips to eat. There's a lot of things that people don't realize happen on the bus, but that you have to really get along with people in order to be- Very close quarters. Very close quarters. <laughs> yes. uh, now in Europe, the European buses are very different than American buses because the, they, they do these double-decker. Um, how did you, I felt a little, mm, I don't know, claustrophobic <laughs> in, the, in the bunk. You mean in my bunk I never went in? Oh, <laughs> I tried, I tried. It's like, no, nope, not gonna happen. <laughs> Too many feelings. I have to go stay in the lounge. I sleep on the couch. It's but. true. I mean, there are certain tricks to it, right? And and I was mad at Max on the first time I was on the bus because everyone went and changed into their bus pants. He didn't give you the heads up. And I was like, what are bus pants? Why didn't I know about this? And he was like, oh, my bus pants are my jeans. Not comfy. Not comfy no, no, to no, sleep in. No. Because what you have to do is after a show, you know, let's we'll take a shower and the band and wait, that's not it. So <laughs> 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 separately. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's all go take a shower. <laughs> and then she puts on her PJs and then technically we should all put on our PJs and then we get in the bus because it's late and then you go right to sleep. But first time I was I didn't know that either. Yeah. So I need all my stuff and my little life bag. Like, so where's the bathroom though? Like, right. oh, no. <laughs> No, and we're moving. Yeah, that's it. You, that's it. You just, and the yeah. bathroom is like half the size of a porta potty. Yeah, it's, it's teeny. And, and it's you, yeah, it, it's pretty small. <laughs> but it teaches you a lot to be able to get along with people in a very small space. And this is such an amazing group. Yeah, oh, such an amazing group. Great stories, you know, and um, long bus rides bring out great stories, lots of opinions. And as a writer, don't you kind of, yeah, lots of opinions, yeah. But as a writer, isn't it fun to be on the road because it's like it's a dream to be on a bus with the, with musicians and, and, and you yeah. must spark a lot. It is, I mean, I think just being in new environments is mm -hmm. so stimulating and looking around and being out of your normal routine. Um, so, you know, we've been everywhere from like a rural fairgrounds in Connecticut yep. to Homburg last I know, it's month. Crazy. So yeah, it's very stimulating. Good. I good. try to keep notes. Now, this book is it's kind of our mom theme today. I love that I'm on the mom. You're show. on the mom theme. So that tell us tell us how when when was the first time you went, oh, wait, this this is a book. This is a book for me. Um, you know, I've never written a book. It's my first book. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like um Sometimes you don't always know what you're doing as you're doing it when you're making something new. And you kind of, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's terrifying, actually. Um, and then, I don't know, at some point, maybe there's a tipping point and you think um, this is really something. But one of the things that I have loved is hearing all these singers and, and storytellers. They're really storytellers who, for me, were some of the first uh, women who I heard really using raw emotion in, as, as if feeling mattered, yeah, right, in, right. in song. Yeah. Like Paula Cole, I mean, um, I have cried at everything that I've gone to see. Paula Cole, Paula Cole, Dar. Wendy, Dar, I mean, everyone, just yeah. like Sogfest, kind of. Um, and as a writer, you can be so inspired, more, more than people realize by, by singers and musicians, because there are many yeah. stories, my God, if anything, it's a great way to learn how to write because it's a condensed story of emotion Absolutely. and poetry. Yeah, it's all condensed. I think you sort of learn what to leave out and what to put in and how the reader can kind of make certain leaps along with you, so yeah. And um, one of the themes in this is, is an event that happened to you when you lost your mom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which a lot of us can, as women, these, not just losing our mom, but these, these events in our life that can really propel us into amazing creativity because that's where the art heals us, right? Yeah, that I, I heard, <coughs> so my, well, to speak more broadly, just so you know, um, I sort of think of this as a, as a love story, but it's a love story between a mother and a daughter. And, um, you know, we love romantic love, we love the rage and the, all those things that we're um, relating to Melissa's songs through, but this is also, Another kind of love that I don't think always gets spoken about so much. Um, and I think my mother thought motherhood was really important and wasn't always lauded in our culture. So it's been really moving to see so many powerful women and mothers on this. Um, she a white mistress? Yeah, I think she would have. I mean, she likes pina coladas, <laughs> and Yeah, definitely. Um, so, uh, wait, I forget your question. Oh, lost, right. <laughs> You're doing great, I just love it, go on. Um, yeah, 
so it is about, she, she died of cancer and I was her caretaker, which I think is probably also a role that a lot of people have taken on. Um, but for me, the experience of being close to someone uh, as they were close to death, I, I had never felt more alive was really um, what was so instructive about it for me. So, um, you know, you start to take, every, everything feels so important, every um, honeysuckle bush and every uh, roast chicken is suddenly like the best roast chicken because it all feels so brief and so important. Um, so I always want to say, you know, it's not, yes, it is about grief and loss, it's, it's about, a love letter to, it is to a the love world. Letter. Kind of. And what's beautiful in here too is, and what I love about beautiful writing, it's like delicious food. There's, I, I will read certain sentences and go, oh, and call certain friends and go listen to this sentence. There's, <laughs> you, 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 um, you, you. you do one of my favorite things is, is you do, you find that, you know, God is in the details. Yeah. And, and especially with us day by day, it's those little things, especially about food yes. or memory or, or water or any little memory of, on a hike and water. It's just all the little details that you put in. It's such a beautiful, you're a beautiful Thank writer. You. Thank you so much. And I think what's great for everyone to know that we go through similar situations, that it doesn't matter if you're going to publish or not. Yeah. Just, just get your feelings out. Write it down, right? That's what Paula Cole said last night that I, that resonated so much with me where she said, sometimes I don't even know how I'm feeling until I sit down to write it. Right, um, right. And for me, that's such a huge part of processing emotion is just being creative with it. And then not just writing it, because I know when I did Nurse Jackie, it was getting a lot of my, my rage out, and then during the certain episodes, it's like, oh, I'll get this out. <laughs> and really, when you, when you get it out, one thing is writing it, that's, what, that's cathartic. But then when you either hear it read out loud, mm -hmm. that's a whole other thing. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh there. my gosh. Can you read me one of your favorite little passages? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll hold yeah. the mic for you if that helps. I just love when, when, I don't know if you guys ever do book on tapes or, or when you hear, I love hearing authors read their words. I think it's kind of amazing. So um, just if there's a favorite little something. I do have a thing about uh, cooking that I think, you know, hold on, give me a sec. No worries. What's the name of the book? It's called Joy Enough. <coughs> Joy Enough. And um, she actually brought some extra copies with her, so if you guys want to chat with her after she comes sign a few, that's right. <laughs> okay, but, oh, okay. Um, I was 20 the year my mother taught me how to roast a chicken. It was the deep dark of January, and we cut celery side by side on soapstone counters. She softened stale bread with warm chicken broth, gathered the torn cubes up by the handful, and stuffed the cavity. I stood next to her taking notes, wrote, Bell seasoning. I was about to move into my first apartment 1,200 miles away and four blocks from my St. Paul College campus, and this was my home economics crash course. <laughs> we baked a loaf of whole wheat bread that night from a stained page of The Spiral Bound, More with Less Cookbook, written by Mennonite missionaries in the 1970s. It was filled with her backward check marks and a note to add buttermilk to the refrigerator bran muffins. She gave me its lessons in shorthand. This is how to rub two pennies together and eat for a week. Serve some of the chicken hot from the oven with steamed broccoli and a spoonful of stuffing. Pull the meat from the bones and chop. Tomorrow, pile chicken on slices of homemade bread with mayonnaise, salt, and pepper. Cover the carcass with water. Boil the bones for soup. She took the bread from the oven knocked the top crust and told me to listen for a hollow sound. We sliced two slabs of bread from the loaf, buttered them, and ate the chicken and the soft herby stuffing at the kitchen table beside the bay window blooming with tall amaryllis and paper white bowls. She wrote a grocery list. Here's what to keep in your pantry. She wrote bell seasoning too. <laughs> Here's how to soften brown sugar. Here's how to make a cheap chocolate cake in a sheet pan. And here's how to cover it with walnuts so no one sees its uneven surface. She ripped the list from a pad, folded it, and sent me back to Minnesota for the spring semester, feeling equipped as a pioneer. Once there in my sunny kitchen, I followed her instructions and hatched herb seedlings in empty eggshells on the sill of the kitchen window next to the table where I read Richard III. My roommates entered the kitchen, sniffing, something rotting.
Yeah, we, none of us have mother feelings or issues or anything. <laughs> and that's, Sarah, thank you. Oh, that, thank that you I, so much. I am serious. I, I just, I'm so happy that you're in our life and that you've been my little buddy on the bus here yes. and there. And it's like, yeah. hi, we're like the two non but Hi, hi, we're not the musicians, but we're on a bus. <laughs> um, I'm so excited for your career. And, and will you pull on the next cruise with your next book? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I hope I get it done that fast. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I don't want to go up to Sarah afterwards and yeah, say hi. I'm going to your coffee. So. <laughs> something away. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So you know that Melissa loves uh, puzzles, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we had her, I had her start signing them. Woo! So Melissa did this puzzle and she signed the puzzle inside. And I just, I, we, we brought a bunch with us. I thought, I'm going to give one away during the, I'm trying to think of the best way. Like, um, should we do it for who's been a fan the longest? What do you think? Or is there somebody that you want to nominate that should get this puzzle? Who wants to nominate somebody? Megan. Megan. Because. Megan. Because. Birthday girl. Because you Birthday girl. Birthday right girl. girl. And you're right in front. It's me. <laughs> well, then there you go. Guess what? You want a brand new puzzle. <laughs> Okay, so now when you do this, you know that she touched every single piece of that. Are there all the pieces in there? Yes, they are. <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to put that in the puzzle room. Oh, no, we, we did them as fundraisers. That's what we were doing. We gave for Libby's Legacy. There was a, um, they, they, we did a little, uh, Auction? Did you get a chance to? Oh. Well, next time we'll let you all know. We'll have ten more that you think this is a really fun way to, to raise raise money for Libby's legacy and stuff. So, yay! Okay, we're moving on. Wait a oh, hi. I think this is beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Come in, walk right up here right now. Say hi. <laughs> Rising. Yeah. Um, we've been together for a little while, and we've you know 
been toured all over the world, and, and most recently, I guess in the past few years, we started our own nonprofit called Girls Rising. Yes. Um, and thank you. Yes. And uh, we've been we do outreaches and um, workshops in communities and um, schools and universities and corporations where we go and we talk about our experiences as women in the male-dominated industry. And we've expanded it to include, thank you, we've expanded it to include all industries really, mostly STEAM, especially because that's like a hot thing in the school, science, technology, um, whatever the E stands for, I can't think of right now, except like I just worked on. You all know. And, um, so, and so we'll bring in other artists, we may bring, so we do a panel discussion basically. And, um, and then most recently we also did start a festival, a music festival called the Girls Rising Music Festival. We do it at the end of June every year. This year it's June 22nd. And um, on Friday night before the festival, June 21st, we do something called the, the Girls Rising Game Changer Awards and we honor a woman who has you know, done something to blaze a trail and change the world. Last year we honored Carney Wilson and this year can't say who we're honoring, but they might be on the boat. And but it's not Melissa, just so you know. But it is someone on the boat. I don't want to miss. And um, um, okay. And, and Melissa has started a, a grant through Girls Rising, so that is true. Melissa Etheridge. You know, be a big part of that. Yeah. Yeah. So we do a Melissa Etheridge grant, and Melissa always does a big video message to the winners, and and then she also did say the other day, I'm going to get this on camera for sure. Yes. Um, Melissa did say that any of her grant winners from years past or from this day forward are also not only get the grant award, but they get to come on the cruise. Yes. Wow. <laughs> And, and my experience is all the love on the cruise, you're going to all start not only, it's, it's mentoring on mentoring on mentoring, yeah. and just surround these women and get them ready for this amazing career that they're going to have in a whole new world, right? Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. So if any of you work in a school or know where a school is in your town or a community center, we would love to come and do an outreach workshop. But we've now like partnered it a lot with our tour schedule. Um, and all over the world, yeah, we've, we've been everywhere. We've been to Israel, Vietnam, Asia, all over Europe. And um, I just wanted to say, um, yeah, if you have a school, we'll come. But, and now the workshops have now started sort of dictating our tour schedule instead of vice versa. So for a while it was like, we're going on tour, let's get, let's get outreaches. But the outreaches have gotten so popular, especially these days under the current administration, it's very easy. Why, what's happening? <laughs> It's a, very popular, it's a very popular thing to bring us into the schools because of what's going on in the country. Well, I love and our voices get really low. <laughs> so now the outreaches have been dictating our tour schedule. We have so many outreaches, so we're like, oh, we might as well play. <laughs> so now we become a nonprofit that also happens to be a band. So, all right, and that and is your just, amazing wife. Let's talk that's about right, her. That's right, my really amazing wife. Hi, how are you? Uh, my name's Sarah Kate Ellis. And I'm the president and CEO of GLAD, which is an Woo! amazing yeah. um, And um, so my job every day is to protect and fight for the LGBTQ community and make sure that we're being represented properly, that our stories are being covered, that any crises that are happening, which are unfortunately many right now, are, be, are getting coverage and that they're getting attention so that we can find solutions and move forward. Sarah, you were sharing yesterday when um, you and their, their, both their moms are on the cruise, they're amazing. Uh, um, if you, you, were, you were sharing yesterday about uh, how Glad jumped in during Matthew Shepard. We were talking about Matthew Shepard. And um, I didn't know that. Yeah. That happened. So, uh, so much of our work is behind the scenes that nobody ever sees it. The things that do happen in public are very, very public. So that's why the organization is oftentimes known as the watchdog, because when they, if it's a public fight, it's it's at the end, and we haven't been able to come to a reasonable discussion with whoever the, um, the challenge is with. So we, during Matthew Shepard, what happened was, is that we flew down, we, you know, if there's a, if there's a crisis, we show up, especially if there's gonna be a media circus around it. It's not unlike Pulse, because when Pulse happened, when the shooting at Pulse happened, they were just reporting that it was a nightclub. And I thought it was really important that it was a, a Latinx night at a nightclub. Um, and so we showed up and we were correcting the record in real time. And in the Matthew Shepard case, we showed up and there were news outlets that were starting to try this narrative out that there was it was a drug deal gone wrong. Um, 
and we got into pretty big fights with news outlets over this because and and they didn't really have substantial evidence to corroborate that so we ended up being able to push that narrative aside and get to the real narrative which ended up with the hate crime act um, and has progressed from there so. Blessed that we've gotten to know you guys because not only are we all moms and we have kids, but that you, for me, especially being in television all these years, God, to be able to talk to you guys and to see, because I, I you know, after 30 years of getting in television, I, I want to be able to do television and I want to like food. I want to make healthy food, I want to make healthy television. So that's why, um, when you asked me earlier about what we're doing, I, I do, and I've showed these guys, we've done a little a little pilot version of what we're gonna be doing with Josie and Cricket and our life and Melissa and I. And I'm hoping you get the feel, just even for, it's not, we haven't, it hasn't started yet because it's kind of, it's what we're doing is once we have full funding for our company, we're gonna start filming and then, and we are actually putting things in motion of what's the greatest stuff to film. And what you guys have helped me realize, is I, I wanna use the television, use it for good, like this cruise, right? There's so much, um, I know I know it's a crazy time and, and your mom was so funny yesterday talking about your dad and the news and I can't uh, And you know our families are fighting over who's watching what channel of news, right? So TV I'm telling you as somebody who makes TV take a break from it. It's like bad food sometimes, right? I mean I can be sucked into uh, Real Housewives in a heartbeat, you know, that's fun sometimes and any cooking show don't I love but um, I think television I'm so excited about the future of what we can do for all, um, artists on the ship, new young women that we're, we're meeting to get them. And hopefully my goal is to also create a, um, a television production kind of thing that we can we can help women behind the scenes because I, all, every crew I've ever had is, is predominantly male and I've had a lot of beautiful men that have worked for me but I want women to be able to go, hey, I want to know how to sound design. I want to know how to be uh, a gaffer. I want to know how to do lighting. I want to. So that's what I, I get excited about TV. Yeah, yeah. I. I mean, I don't. Did you talk about the shows that you've worked on? I mean, Linda has been on phenomenal shows and has really shaped the culture. Um, and, but we are what we consume, whether it be food or television media, and media is. The dominant force in our lives that shapes our our opinions, our thoughts, and so overconsumption of anything is not good. And I think, um, but the power lies there. And and if we can craft it, we can actually affect massive change with media. And one of the things that we've done at Glad recently is that um, we've started. We have these uh, awards annually called the Glad Media Awards, and they they um, are for fair and accurate representation. And it was done, it's the 30th anniversary actually this year. Wow, and the 30. reason 30 is that when we started as an organization, we were a watchdog. So we were slapping a lot of hands and we wanted to create a carrot. We wanted to create something to aspire to if you were a creative. And so these were the awards. But recently we started um, the Youth and Family Award. So for television programming for kids which was sort of the place that you could never go before, um, especially in the LGBTQ community because there were some really nasty narratives around that. Now we have kids programming. And so, and, and I've seen it in real time affect my own family. Chris and I have twin 10 year, 10 year old. We were watching a show not too long ago on Disney about six or seven months ago and one of the little girls on the show said, well, I don't know if my two moms will let me go. And I could see my kids say, oh, they have two moms like me. And it's so important to see yourself and you don't even... I just, I can't believe you're here. We're here and we're on the boat and with all this, with everyone that we can talk about these things. This I can't just... believe we have to get off the boat. <laughs> Well, we were talking yesterday about the commune, so we're working on it. Carolyn, you have a wonderful question, I bet. Thank you. Here, I'll walk over this way again. It's more of a... Gotta get my steps in. It's more of a comment. Uh, in the current administration, and I would safely say we're all resistors, you know, I think what's happened is, um, in a trickle-down way, 
we're all rising up. Yes. The people are trying so hard to take care of each other when the government is whatever that crazy ass government is, we didn't call it that, but I, I see and I feel and I hear and I imagine so many of you do too and, and up on this stage and what you're cultivating here and what you're bringing out and what I think is so important is that we are here for each other. And then in TV, I'm seeing it. Shows are getting softer, kinder. They're advocating more for the underrepresented, for the underserved. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that that is because whether you believe in a God or you don't, your internal compass is what guides you to be a better person. I would, I completely agree. I travel a lot, um, both nationally and internationally, and one of the things that I've noticed is that Hollywood is stepping up. We are starting our own movements. If it's not Black Lives Matter, it's Me Too, Time's Up, and then you see, actually CEOs, I, I, I go to this, thing called the World Economic Forum where all the big CEOs of the major companies get together in January and every CEO stood up, who stood up and spoke, talked about filling the leadership void that we have in human rights. It was phenomenal. It was, it was uh, and a lot of discussions around um, you, you can't just have profits, you have to have purpose. Uh, which was a, 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 a big shift in the yeah. conversation. And so I think everybody um, with, you know, everybody is noticing that we do have a serious moral lack of leadership in this country and citizens are stepping up, forming movements, marching, showing up. Um, Hollywood is really showing up and business is showing up, so that is inspiring. This is so important because I think that's what's the feeling we have on the, on the cruise, and I know we're, we're wrapping up on the cruise here, but I really want everyone to know that you limit, you know, we have the power. We have the power. When you leave yes, here, have the power. exactly. They should, they should know that. And we can sit there and be angry at our government, or every day on the, and my wife has taught me this, is if, if every day, all like you're you're in fear or you're in love, okay? Love or fear, where am I coming at from this? And I know if I'm coming at love and somebody is coming at me with a bunch of starch because I don't know what's going on with their life, or I do, again, you, as a director, since I direct so much TV, sometimes I'll see people interact and go, oh no, stop, let's, let's, I'm gonna redress this scene, Let, let's redo this scene because you're playing this all wrong. He didn't mean that. She meant this. So it's like I see people misunderstand each other all day long. So at times when you when you go back, it's like being in TV. Just ask yourself, wait a minute, wait, can I change the script? Who am I playing in this scene? I better like who I'm playing in this scene. Okay, ask yourself, like, oh wait, and can I throw some grace at somebody who doesn't have it right now? Because that's really where we're at right now. We can't shame everybody into thinking the way we do. And we do, we have family members that we're, we're not talking to each other. So throw humor at them if you can, you guys. Find a way to, do I need to destroy them right now or can I unclench and find a better way? And that's what hopefully we're gonna be able to trickle on TV more, again, with I, who I think is one of the greatest energies who should be on TV is my wife because she is, she truly is, she comes from love. And so um, I'm excited about what that's gonna be and I'm so excited you guys are here and it, it worked out perfect. So oh my see, gosh, thank you so much. Nice. 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 No, it was perfect. But now it all worked out. out. But so you're right, I just want to put a uh, period on the end of your sentence, which is, we're all social justice warriors anywhere we live in the world, and it's small acts. It, it takes, um, it takes a small it group. Of pe it takes a small group of people, though, to make big change, and we've seen that historically. And we are on the right path. I mean, I know it can be dark if you go home and you feel isolated and alone, but you know we are moving towards justice for everyone and equality for everyone. It's just that we're in a little bit of a, a kickback right now, and that happens. It does happen. This is where heroes are born, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. I can say for certain too that we're in really good hands.
genitals. And have you guys seen them? And they're two of dear friends of ours. They have such a great story of how this band started. We're going to have a we're gonna, we're talk. Come here. Julie and Lisa, everybody. Hello. I'm also so excited to now be your second author on the, on the oh, show. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my God. I'm getting all fancy with my hands here. It was it, it was accidental at first because I I um I got a PhD in philosophy for fun and uh, and they ended up because I graduated uh, summa cum laude. It was great. Um, a sentence on will never say. They they published uh, they published my dissertation, but it was kind of a joke. You'll appreciate this. Is my dissertation? I'm also a playwright, and my dissertation was 150 pages of footnotes to my own play. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, it is one of the most genius things I have ever read. I was dying when I read this because as writers, you know, you have to follow all these rules. And I went, oh my God, what did your professor say when they saw that? Well, I, I had a feeling it was like a 50-50 chance they were either gonna be like, what is this? Like, why are you <laughs> kidding me? And, and, and when I went in and I, I presented the concept, because it was trying to elucidate uh, a, a theory, because you know, one of the requirements for a dissertation is a groundbreaking new thought, so no big deal. You know, like, okay, something no one's ever thought of before. Um, so it, it's a little esoteric, but it was, it, the concept was about this thing I called void creation, which is pretty much every time we're communicating, when we create art, when we do anything, really what we're creating is space between us where we where our thoughts interact and our experiences interact where i'm saying words but you're thinking like who the hell is this person and my she reminds me of my sister and what you know it's like there's this whole other thing going on and those I'm, are the I'm spaces i'm sorry julie but did you see who just walked in <laughs> what oh sweet lord oh, <laughs> You know the commercial about the most interesting man? This is pretty much the most interesting woman. But, and boxing? And yeah. I'm also a retired, undefeated professional boxer. Oh. <laughs> retired, undefeated. I like to throw that in. I know, it's really nice. It's really great. It can go a lot of directions. <laughs> just so, okay. I like to say, yes. So honey, honey, are you just walking? Are you, are, what, what's, your, what's your day? What are you doing next? You I'm just, going to hug about a thousand people now. Yeah. 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 Is everybody already, is everyone going to that? You guys already yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to take our pictures. Okay. It's, it's uh, I'll leave you alone. No, 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 no. I love talking to you. It's amazing, too, because Melissa and I met because in my in my day job, I uh, I also am uh, a cannabis compliance um, expert most interesting in California. <laughs> so I do regulatory cannabis compliance and help people follow the rules, and that was how I was introduced to Melissa because she's been working on this project. And it's like Linda was saying, the day that I met her, which for many of us probably yeah it was one of the craziest days of my life um was amazing because she she came to to my office because we'd been introduced as um some i was somebody she could trust in the industry so, highly recommended and um and she came in her and linda came in and linda was talking about you being an alien from another planet and, and it was the strangest thing because it happens when you meet certain people it happens where i have this response where there was just there's just no veil. There was nothing. I just saw them and we were like, oh, home planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, let's pick up where we left off. We were, like, yeah, we were like, it's a century ago. We've been having this conversation yes. and we just kept going. Yes, it was, yes. And it was magical. And we, you know, we talked for 
two hours about cannabis and the cannabis industry and all these things. And you know, she was looking for for brand partners and. And then, you know, she was asking me, she's like, so, you know, the company you work for, they're good people, you trust them, your bosses? And I was like, fuck no. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, the trust her. Yeah. Like, oh, stay away, like, run away from this one. Don't work with these people. And then midway through the conversation, uh, she just looked into my eyes. And I just remember, we were downstairs, so she looked in my eyes and she goes, who are you? <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, I, I write plays, I'm in a band called the Evangenitals. And oh, I gotta, I gotta know this one. <laughs> Anyone you, who dares to, it's like, did you tell them you purposely named that so you just would never ever make it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it gets even more interesting because Lisa, Lisa is my best friend. We met uh, working at an okay, online. Wait, hold that story a second, because I got to see how how are you on time? I have very because, little time. Yeah, yeah that's why we're going to say goodbye. Then we're going to okay. jump. That's part of the story. Oh, okay. 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 You got booted. <laughs> Okay, that's story, because that's part of what we're going to look okay. into something else. Yeah. So, okay, okay, I won't tell that story. No, no, I want to talk real quick about 80s night, because... Oh, uh, 80s night. I don't know if you recognize me not in a LeMay purple jumpsuit singing Let's Go Crazy. Um, but, what happened uh, when you... What, what did you think when you... Like, you we knew Julie was going to have fun, but at one point I looked at you and you went, Oh my God, look at Julie. Oh, well, no, no, I should expect, expect the, the absolute top craziest thing ever. No, you are about performance art. You're, you're like the, a performance artist, and that's, I love that. I've, I've loved that since the 80s when that became a, a word, performance artist. You know, it's like taking entertainment. You know, I write songs, and, you know, we, we share them. You do, them. we're not familiar. Uh, uh, you know, you I have a few, uh, yeah, right. And, and, but to then take it to a, a, a level of, of, like intelligence and thought put into the performance. That's why I love I love what your your band does because it's it's not only they're incredibly talented musicians and that's great and they're funny, but it's smart funny. It's really it's thoughtful. It's it's and I love that. And so you when I said hey, can you open the show? Do you because you love Prince and you know you know let's go crazy and you you you, you came out and yes, of course. That's, <laughs> Exactly what she's gonna do. It was it was gorgeous. It was the first time I ever wore a thong in public, <laughs> and I was like, "What better time to do it than in front of thousands of people?" <laughs> but I will say, my favorite thing is that Melissa is such a you know a seasoned professional, has seen it all, you know, performed everything, and it was almost like I was telling Linda, it was almost like in SNL when on Saturday Night Live when you see somebody break and start laughing. <laughs> Like seeing you just head down, <laughs> cracking up, just dying laughing was like, it's going. What's brought me so much joy. And then the other thing that is, okay, this is the thing that I think is miraculous and is important with, with our band and with what we do and, and, and just ultimately, like everyone's sharing, like being yourself and showing, you know, the, the, the part of yourself, almost that you don't want people to see, you know, like the, um, is that is that so many people after that when I came out when I kind of came off the stage, Dar Williams like walks up to me and she's like, "Thank you, you set us all free. <laughs> you, know, like, like, you, like you just gave us all permission." Yes, because because some of the gals, you know, let's let's go do this, you know, and, and some of them aren't used to you know kind of doing cover songs and getting out there and getting crazy, and you just. You know, so everybody else is like, oh, we're safe now. This is, you know, we're not the strangest one. And it's interesting, right before, two seconds before we went on stage, the, the ladies from Antigone Rising walked up and they said, we're going to jump on, we're going to jump fate. on for with fate. you for, for the next song. And we hadn't practiced that. And they looked at Julie and said, we're going to jump on. And I turned to her and I said, hey, they're going to, and she turned to them and she said, Watch me for the changes and try to keep up. She's <laughs> like, she's serious. But in, in true 80s night fashion, that's a quote from Back to the Future. Just so you know. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs>
it's all it's all meta. Like I'm so many levels deep. But it was, I mean, it was, it, it was, I was trying to explain to somebody the next day, like, about the experience of doing that, and I just started sobbing, because it was just like, I was Aww. so, I was so grateful, like, and it's Aww. so incredible, and the thing I said to Dar, after I got off the stage, is it's like my, my personal mantra of life, and it's the same with the band, and it's, it, and it's everything, is, is it's the paradox of caring so deeply, like so deeply, and absolutely not giving a shit at the same time, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah. 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 I'm going to, um, I just, I'm so proud of you. Were you just checking out my can help heal you. You started, tell, let's tell the story about how you two okay. met and why the band started. So Lisa and I met uh, working at an online sex toy company in oh. Los Angeles. I mean, who hasn't? Go on. Who hasn't? <laughs> and uh, at the time, I was uh, cripplingly shy, so most of our relationship was over chat between our desks, which was, you know, five feet away, <laughs> where I wouldn't talk to anybody, but I would chat with Lisa all day. And, and, um, uh, I wasn't playing music, like, I had, you know, studied upright bass for fun, uh, and when I lived in New York and written some dorky songs, and, and, uh, and then a roommate stole my bass, and that was that. Uh, so, uh, so I'm sitting there working, Lisa's uh, studying opera, and we find out this thing, like, oh, you study opera, I study theater, and we should make some stuff, and whatever. And then, um, one day at work, we were trying to name a manufacturing product, and <laughs> we're a new product. And I just made up the word evangenitals as a joke. And this is like 2003, like 2003. And uh, I thought it was so funny. I worked on computers all day, so I designed a fake website for a fake band called Evangenitals. 
And we would like go on trips and go on vacation and post pictures and pretend that we were in a band. <laughs> and, and then another friend of ours who's a, who's a musician gave me a guitar out of the blue and was like, you really should be playing music. And, um, and, I, knew, and I found this old notebook of my dorky old songs and I, and I could only play a guitar like, like a bass. I just played bass forms on a guitar because I didn't know any chords and I played them for Lisa and she was like, I took a guitar class, here's a G. Um, <laughs> and, and around this time I had retired from boxing and, and I, I was like lost in the world. And I actually did the artist way. You guys know the book, The Artist Way? Great right. book, great So book. I did the artist way. And then, and then as a result of that, Lisa and I were like, it was right around Christmas time, 2003. and. Um, and as a BFF exercise, there was a, an open mic in our neighborhood uh, where a lot of awesome bands play that a lot of the members of my band were in those awesome bands. Well, and I'll say at that time, Julie was just starting to retire from boxing and I had just decided I didn't really want to be an opera singer. And so all of a sudden we could stay out late and eat cheese and you know, do all of these things that we couldn't do when we were athletes with our bodies. We would just go have fun. So, so Wait, Chris just, talking, but I'm gonna scoot you out a little bit. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, Christmas, Christmas 2003. Um, we decide as an exercise in overcoming shyness that we're gonna go to the open mic and we're gonna sing uh, two Christmas carols and an original song. Oh no! <laughs> and, and we did it, and it was great. And then at that show, there was a promoter, and they were like, "Hey, you're amazing. You want to play this other giant club?" And I was like, uh, "Yes." <laughs> so we're like, "Let's write more songs." So, so, and then when we went to the open mic, you sign up, and they're like, well, what's the name of your band? And we were like, Even Genitals, I guess. <laughs> like, I've been doing this fake band for a while. And, and the more it's gone, it's one of those things, the more it's gone, the more it's made sense, and it, and it, and it kind of defines itself. One, by definition, you know, to get dictionary dorky, like evangelical just means to be passionate and zealous about something, and genitals, are the organs of creation, you know? So I'm like, I'm just passionate about creation. But I also like that I feel like going to an evangenitals show, if you see a band and it's like evangenitals, it's like signing a safety waiver where you're like, whatever happens, it's cool. Like, where, where sometimes I feel like if our name was like Pancakes, yeah. Right. And then we start singing about some of the things we sing about, people would be like, I'm deeply offended. <laughs> so, so what's great, what I love, and, and I wish we could have the whole band up here, but we don't have enough room, so, yeah. and Lisa, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, do you mind just hanging here? She's going to sing one of my favorite songs, and, and I feel bad that, because I love your band, but, yeah. but if we have more room, we would do this, but I, I, Julie's going to do a special request. I love Prince, too, and she does the most amazing version of Purple Rain. Purple Rain, yes. but... But what makes it different is it is a, oh, is it, it's how it, it's not, well, well I'll, you'll see. You'll okay, see. all right. I was trying to explain it to, to Linda and, and Melissa the other day, because we were talking about 80s nights, and I was like, oh yeah, I love Prince, we do Purple Rain, and we do it like this, and Melissa was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and, uh, do, do we, I, is the band okay about I'm playing? Are they, I mean, it's kind of- You guys nice. are cool. I mean, I super you appreciate early, you guys waking it's up nice so early. You came and you're supporting and I, me, are you, it's beautiful. I'm good. <laughs> Lisa's, Lisa's used to me being like, hi, everybody. Uh, All right, then, then, then thank you for being such a good sport. But so usually we do a little introduction to help get you in the right headspace, just so when I do it live, so I'll do a little bit of that. It goes like this. The year is 1984. I want you to picture yourself riding through the night on a dark, dark night in the rain. And you're riding on a purple motorcycle wearing leather pants and a poet's blouse with very, very large shoulder pads. And you have a pompadour on your head the size of a small animal. See it! Feel it! Whoa, 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 what's this? There's a woman on the back of your motorcycle, and she's got lace over her face and a very, very exotic name, like Vanilla, or Ambrosia, or Quebec. And you are in love, even if it's only for just one night, you are in love, <laughs> as you ride together in the rain. Can you see it? Yes. Do you feel it? Yes. Are we there? Yes. Then we may begin. <laughs> I never meant to cause you any sorrow. Never meant to cause you any pain 
And only one one time she left him. Ha ha ha. I only want to see you laughing in the purple rain. Purple rain, purple rain, purple rain. To see you bathing in the purple rain. I never wanted to be your weekend lover. I just want to be some kind of friend till the end. I can never steal you from another. I am not a thief. It's such a shame. It's such a shame. It's such a shame. My friendship has no end. Purple rain, purple rain, purple rain. Reach out for the new. We reach out for the new. That means you too, right? <laughs> you say you want to leave. You can't seem to make up your mind. I think you better close it. I think you better close it. I would like all of you to close your minds right now and let me guide you to the Let's do this again next year, okay?